What makes customers loyal? It's the billion dollar question that companies the world over have been asking themselves. Loyalty subscriptions have absolutely exploded with over 25 subscriptions on average per household and over 3 billion in total across the United States. The big problem is that half of these are completely inactive and in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can avoid these pitfalls and take emotional engagement into your company and into your app. Let's jump in. So the main problem with mobile loyalty programs and loyalty programs in general is that they're mainly kind of like forced price discounting programs. Are you really gonna pay the full price when the plastic card offers you a discount? Probably not, but just by paying with the card and getting a discount doesn't really create loyalty, doesn't create any loyalty between you and the company. And in fact, sometimes you have loyal customers for reasons other than the discounting. Uh, maybe you have some emotional uh, lo uh, loyalty going on and you're subsidizing customers that are already loyal. And this really erodes at profit margins and really doesn't make much sense. Sometimes we also mistake transactions for loyalty and just because someone buys from you very frequently doesn't necessarily mean uh, that they're loyal. We're going to be covering that a little bit later. Um, often loyalty programs make customers do a lot of the work in terms of accruing these points or collecting stamps and from getting from A to B can actually seem like this very long process, a lot of hard work and may not actually be worth it. So these are the kind of four problem areas that we're going to be covering and how you can deal with them in your business. But it doesn't really have to be this way. I think that there are tremendous opportunities to bring things back to basics while using some new technology to help us to really understand customers better, the true expression of who they are and what they want to be able to recognize customers when they come in, when they talk to us, and to be able to talk back to these guys in ways that make sense, in ways that are very personal, and also in ways that are, are relevant to them. And using these concepts, the understanding, the recognizing, and the talking back to you in a relevant way that I believe can really create customer love. And as Gary Vaynerchuk would put it in the thank you economy, Marketing is going to go back to the old butcher shop style, the mom and pop stores that knew our names, they knew our children's names, the names of our dogs, and they understood our context. And as humans, we like that personalization. So they use that context, that understanding of who you are and what you like to do business with you and to do business in a very effective way, a way that made you emotionally loyal to them. So. Next up, I want to discuss how you can actually take behavioral loyalty and functional loyalty and turn this into emotional loyalty within your business. So let's jump into that next. So like I was saying, winning the hearts and minds of customers, is it better to win hearts or is it better to win minds? It is about getting a balance and it depends on what industry and what sector you're in. Um, Behavioral loyalty and functional loyalty are very different to emotional loyalty. With behavioral loyalty, it's pretty much just customers buying from you uh, several times or even buying time and time again. Very easy to do, very easy to implement these tracking mechanisms because you have the transaction data and you are accruing the points, you're tracking them and you know that a certain customer buys something time and time again therefore they must be loyal? Well, not all, it's not always the case because customers can be buying from your business routinely because of a lack of alternatives. There's just no other place that they can get this product or nowhere else that's convenient. Or maybe it's really, it's like way, way too painful to switch away from that company. And I'll give you an example of this. Every day near our office here in Dublin, I go and I usually eat a salad for lunch. There's like nothing else around. This is like the only healthy place that I can get food. So you know, on paper to them, I look like I'm loyal to that company. Um, I'm loyal in a behavioral way. I buy that product nearly every day, but I really don't like the business. They don't personalize it to me. They're actually kind of a little bit rude. I hope they're not watching. Um, but they're not doing anything to foster emotional loyalty. I'm purchasing with them and I'm loyal in a behavioral way due to lack of alternatives around the location of our office. So the minute another business springs up that sell salads or better salads, or they're ones that are kind of like more personalized to me, or I feel that I actually like them and connect with them, I'm out of there. There is no way I'm doing business with that company again, but to them, they see me coming back and I look like a very, very loyal customer. Next up, we have functional loyalty. 
Functional loyalty can also be uh, called uh, rational loyalty. And it's your customers making these very, um, you know, they're weighing up in their minds the value proposition of your company, of the relationship between you and them, the price, the cost of your product. And they're making these very calculated, very considered decisions on whether to purchase that or not. And that's, again, not a great uh, place to be because the minute your value prop starts to suck a little or you know a competitor comes out with a value pro better value proposition they're like straight away they're gone to the competitor so there's no emotional attachment and then next up we have emotional loyalty which is more of a psychological attachment this feeling of love affinity um, of association with this brand or with this company that you don't quite know why, but you just love them, you love their products and services, you love being part of the club and you love doing business with them. So this is really where you wanna be. It's one of the most powerful aspects of loyalty is creating those emotional um, connections. I wanna talk a little bit about a concept called cognitive dissonance and backward rationalization. See, often it's, you can use functional loyalty, you can use financial incentives to bribe customers. Usually it only works the first time, so you offer them a financial incentive to modify their behavior. So you give them an offer, you give them a discount or some kind of reward, usually a discount, and you manage to one time kind of correct that behavior. Now, customers don't really like to think that they can be bribed, but the reality is that they can. They just don't like admitting it to themselves. So what they will usually search for is a way of backward rationalizing the decision, um, something that was more than just the functional or financial incentive that they were given. So as marketers, our goal is to help them along with that process and to provide them with a reason to perform the backward rationalization and to make it easy and accessible to them. Because if we can help them to easily backward rationalize, we can keep that behavior and we can make it a recurrent behavior that every time that we give them this offer that they're going to go for it at that price incentive because they're convinced that the products have better quality or they're going to get a better experience or that upgrade, you know, it's going to give them that enhanced impression of themselves or that they are worth it. So provide reasons to, um, you know, backward rationalize for customers to connect the emotional in with the functional. And in essence, what we're doing here is kind of like almost hijacking the limbic brain and um, you know we're moving from the logic centers to the emotional centers flipping those switches and you know if you've ever had an emotional connection with a brand and um, you probably can't put it into words you can't really articulate what it is or why it is it just feels right and that's your 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 limbic brain it doesn't process language it only processes emotions so you can feel a certain way without actually knowing how to articulate that in words and that's hugely powerful for companies to have that recall to make them feel a certain way about your brand that emotional connection think about apple you know you don't have any um, points or rewards programs with apple but you still you know feel this amazing affinity with their with their products so that's backward rationalization and the concepts of cognitive dissonance. It's interesting to note that out of all of these different types, emotional loyalty can actually produce some of the best results. So in, in, in studies, it shows that in, in a retail context, it increases by over 32% the visitation in terms of driving foot traffic, recurring foot traffic into your store, and customers that are actually emotionally engaged and loyal to your brand, on average, will increase their spend by 46%, which is incredible. So you definitely need to balance these, but for you know, department stores and luxury brands, you really wanna be driving the emotional engagement and loyalty. In terms of um, you know, how you take this back into your business and actually employ some of these techniques and connect with customers in a more emotional way, don't make customers work. I've said it over here, this is one of the biggest problems of loyalty programs. They feel like hard work, right? I don't wanna work for my points if there should even be points in the first place. If you are gonna do a points program, um, what we, this is kind of what we call fixed progression, moving from point A to point B, which by the way can kind of seem like this long journey that I start off and I'm, I'm at zero or I've got no stamps and I have to like amass all these points before I reach this goal. Sometimes if things kind of seem too far away and the value of what they're getting or they can get it elsewhere at le for less effort, sometimes it's just not worthwhile and people are like, oh, not really that interested, next, and then you've missed out that opportunity. So one thing that you can do if you're using fixed progression loyalty programs 
is to give them a little help, give them a push, give them this head start. And a way of doing this, a really nice way of doing this is um, you know, to give them two stamps or to give them a set number of points just for downloading the app or just for walking in the door, uh, rewarding presence over transactions or rewarding uh, social, uh, social sharing. So um, try to hide the rules as well. So you know, if you want, um, you, can, you don't necessarily need to make everything clear to customers. You can abstract them behind the scenes and actually kind of make it about, we're gonna give you these random treats and rewards and we're not gonna tell you when. So a company that actually does the, this really well with the surprise and delight factor are actually uh, Panera Breads with the app My Panera Rewards. So you download the app and when you swipe your card, you can get a free coffee or a muffin, but you don't really know when you get these things. They seem kind of random. Of course they're not. It's all about segmentation and uh, big data and understanding what the right offer is for the right customer. They also, if they haven't seen you in a while and they want to show that appreciation and show that love and get you coming on back into one of their stores, they can give you a free coffee as you pass by, but they don't have to do it every time. And therefore, because the rules aren't shown, you don't really feel like you're missing something or something is being taken away because you're abstracting it away. You're using the surprise and the light factor. You're making it kind of random. This is actually a psychological concept called random intermittent reinforcement. We're gonna be doing a video just on this in a couple of weeks, so that's coming up soon. So use that surprise and delight factor to your advantage. Um, use gamification. One thing actually, um, Oleg Ermaninsky um, in Chicago uh, University's professor of marketing showed that as customers get closer to a goal, they're much more likely to uh, continue on that path and actually achieve the goal. So when it seems achievable, you are much more likely to go for the goal. When it seems further away, maybe not so much. When they put a uh, mice on runways and there was a food pellet, as the mouse got closer to the food pellet, they actually ran faster. And as you get more stamps on your book, your actual frequency of visit to that coffee shop they've shown will increase the closer you are to getting that final stamp done. So what a car wash actually did is they, with their stamp books, they did a split test. In version A, you had to collect eight stamps in order to get a free car wash. In version B, you had to collect 10 stamps to get a free car wash, but they actually stamped off the first two stamps so that they gave you this artificial feeling of progress and that you're already well on your way towards achieving the goal. And the version that already had two ticked off outperformed by 2x the version that didn't, that made you feel like you were starting from blank. So get customers off to a good start. Don't make them start at square one. Give them some points as they sign up for downloading the app, whatever it is, don't make them feel, if you're using fixed progression, don't make them feel they're starting totally from, from scratch. You could also look at hiding these rules and completely getting rid of the concept of fixed progression. Because it just feels like, you know, this goal is too far away. What my Panera Breads do um, with their rewards app is they abstract all of that away from the interface. The customer has no idea. So it's these random rewards that use the surprise and the light factor. Sometimes you get a muffin and a coffee when you come in. It seems random, but it's not. It's heavily segmented and run off big data. And when customers go by that might be disengaged and haven't tra transacted in a while, you can offer those guys a free coffee. But they're not disappointed if they don't get it every time when they're going by because the rules aren't public. They're abstracted away and you're just relying on that surprise and the light factor. Technically, this is known as random intermittent reinforcement. You can Google that one if you want to learn a little bit more. But we have a video coming out probably in a couple of weeks that we're going to delve into that in, in, in more detail. You could also look at introducing gamification into your loyalty program. More than just um, rewarding based on spend, but maybe based on presence, customers that show up in your store, the ones that explore it. Teleflora, a US florist, increased conversions in their loyalty program by over 92% by bringing in gamification. So more than just rewarding on transactions, customers that got engaged, that shared content, that made it social, and really engaged in their program were the ones that became rewarded as well, and they used this to really up their conversion. You could also look at spiking feelings of accomplishment. Something that Oleg in his research has showed is that the feeling of accomplishment is actually subordinate to the reward itself. So while it's nice to get that free coffee, if you could be made feel that you really achieved, that you really accomplished something, that is actually more what matters to the person than the value of the reward itself. 
So you want to make like a really big deal of big fuss when someone gets that reward, when someone gets that thing in the app, whether it's the free coffee or they earn a badge or a certain status or whatever it is, you want to like play a trumpet, send them a push notification, say congrats, give them the badge, the badge should sit within the application, maybe they can tell all their friends on social networks, really make a big, big deal out of this spike the accomplishment, it's far more valuable than the reward itself. Make customers feel like champions. If you can convey status as well and help customers convey their status and feel almost elite, this is something that's very valuable as well. Companies like Virgin America, um, or sorry, Virgin Atlantic and Starbucks do this quite well. And um, with Virgin Atlantic, when you arrive, they understand, your, they understand you as a customer. They can recognize who you are, what kind of a status you are, are you a VIP? They can talk back to you in the personal way by knowing that you're a VIP and giving you club lounge access, knowing what your favorite food is, what your favorite cocktail is, you really feel rewarded. This goes back into the emotional aspect. They truly understand you. I feel accomplished, I feel elite, and I feel the affinity with this brand far beyond just having a behavioral or functional loyalty, which is, as we've discussed, is sort of okay, but nowhere near what emotional loyalty can do for your business. So use all of these tactics together, understand what the problems are with traditional loyalty programs, 99% of them just based on discounts and points. You're subsidizing your customers that are already loyal, probably eroding at your, your profits. You're looking at transactions and maybe thinking that, you know, it means customer loyalty. It can in certain circumstances, but doesn't always. Sometimes we make customers do a little bit too much work and moving from A to B and filling out all those points of those stamps seems like such a long um, way away. The opportunity is to go back to mom and pop, the butcher shop style. They are personalized. They understand that context, build up that customer context, use it to engage with them. I wouldn't say forget behavioral and functional loyalty for you know, DIY stores and supermarkets. It's kind of hard maybe to craft this emotional loyalty. I don't think you should give up. It's definitely something you, you should strive for, but behavioral, functional, and rational loyalty are gonna be definitely still components of your program, but you wanna inject a little bit more of this for luxury goods brands and department stores. This is where you need to be definitely more of and um, don't forget to use cognitive dissonance to your advantage, provide reasons for customer, customers to backwards rationalize so that you can take this action that they're doing and make it repeatable. Don't just base it, base it on functional. And um, in terms of the techniques, you know, don't make them work, give them a head start, bring the rules outside of the app and just use random intermittent reinforcement to give them surprises, delight them. You wanna make them feel elite, convey that status. So I hope today's video today, guys, has given you everything you need to know about loyalty and some tips and techniques you can take back into your program to supercharge your results, to balance minds with hearts, and to build more of an emotional connection with your customers. Look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you very much. What did I do? A car wash. A car wash. No, I think we need it just in case we run out of time again. What makes our customers loyal? It's the billion dollar company that every... No, it's not a company.